to today's session. So today we continue looking at uh, questions from the August 2022 Mathematics Grade 12 ECZ exams. So this is part three, part three of our session. So we've looked at question one up to question 10. Uh, in part one, we looked at question one up to question six, then further we picked up from question seven up to question 10. So today we are picking it up from question 11. So if you've missed any of the first two parts, please uh, check for the links below where you can access part one and part two so that you get the tips and tricks that you need for you to succeed in your the 12 examinations. So question 11 leads, given that uh, E, a universal set, contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 elements. As elements, then we have A, which is a prime numbers from a universal set, then B, a multiples of 3 from universal set list, A and B complement. So let's start with A. So A, the prime numbers, so prime numbers are numbers which are only divisible by 1 and itself, excluding a 1. So from the uh, set E, which is the inverse set, we have a 2, we have a 3. In a 4, 2 can go there without leaving a remainder. So there, that makes them 3. So 4 is not a prime number. We have a 5. Then we have a 7. 6 is not a prime number. Then we have uh, 9 is not because 3 can go there. Then 10 because 2 can go there. So we only have up to 7 as our prime numbers then next we have b set b which is the multiples so multiples are the numbers that can be divided by three without leaving a remainder so three itself is a multiple then we have three into six is two so six is a multiple then we have a nine so basically we have these three numbers as the multiples of three so if we combine set a and set b what we end up with is a 2. So here we have a 3 and a 3. So we're just picking a 1, 3. Because they're the same. Then we have a 5. Then we have a 6. Then we have a 7. Then we have a 9. So now, if you combine these two, what elements are not found in A union B? So the element that I don't find in A union B is, but they're found in E, is basically a 1. Then we have a 4. Then next we have 8. Then we have 10. So basically we have 4 elements that are found in A union B complements. Or the elements that are not found when you combine A and B. So they are just basically 4 elements. So that's how you answer part B, part A. So let us move to part B of the question. So part B is asking us to, by saying on the diagram, in the answer space, draw a triangle Q, the image of P under the reflection in the line Y is equal to negative X. Okay, so let us just see what P is. So let us see what P is. So if you look at P, basically triangle P. So triangle P is under the reflection. So the reflection passes through. Is this line passes through the origin? So it's, this is a straight line, basically. So pardon me, this is a straight line. Okay, so what we have, we are looking for the straight line. Okay, then what we know is triangle P is this triangle that we are seeing here. Then what you notice is basically the reflection should be the same distance uh, from here to here. 
okay should be the same distance so we need to count one two three this side then this side to be one two three so it should be here i'll use blue Let me use blue to so it will be that way then from here it will be one so this side should be also be from the x-axis it should be uh, basically one so if okay so what i'll notice is this triangle will be one two three it will be here so it will be basically something like so this will be a straight line okay so this will be a cure we are talking about so what you notice is the distance from here to here will be the same as the distance from here to here okay this distance should be the same then it's a deflection then also the distance from here to here then distance from here to here then there are deflections so basically that's how you draw this triangle to answer this question okay so basically this is how you show it then just make sure that this line is labeled properly is so y is equal to minus x like that once you do that then you are good to go with getting those two good marks which is the two marks we are looking at okay so that's question number 11 let us move to question number uh 12. so question number 12 leads a piece of wood measures 25 centimeter find the upper and the lower limit then the percentage error so we have we could have measured 25 centimeters now this 25 centimeters we could have made an error so now this 25 centimeter could have meant that we over or under counted by 0 0.5 which is a subunit of a 1 centimeter so what this tells us the lower limit what is the lowest error that we could have made uh, on the downside it could have been 25 minus 0 0.5 which is basically 24.5 centimeter so this is the lower limit what is the upper limit which is the, uh, the, 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 the upside that we could have made it could have been 25 plus 0 0.5 this would give us 25.5 centimeter measurement so what we are saying basically is we could have made an error of 0.5 upward for us to arrive instead of 25.5 we could have concluded at 25 or instead of 24.5 we could have ended up with measuring 25 centimeter so these are the upper and the the lower remit so this is for part a then part b is asking us to find the percentage error so the percentage error is basically is this error measurement as a percentage of the total our measurement figure our target figure so the percentage error basically is equal to 0 0.5 which is our error measurement 25 then multiply by 100 so what this tells us is if I multiply by 10 I end up with basically 5 over 25 multiply 5 over 250 multiply by 100 percent this is the same or i just multiply or what i could have done is to make it easier not complicated i just multiply 0 0.5 by by 100 i will get 50 
over 25 so I'll end up with 22 2 percent so 2 percent is basically our percentage error our percentage error in the measurement so you look at it then the standard measurement here is 25 then the subunit so 25 every incremental is one centimeter so the subunit of one centimeter which is half upward and upward we divide this by two we end up by 0.5 so 0.5 could be our error of measurement so this one is how you arrive at that so you will make look at the unit measurement of centimeter 25 is a one then we divide by two to get the downward and the upward side okay next let us look at question number 13 so question number 13 is asking us to find the inverse of uh, a function of h where we are saying given that f of x is equal to x minus 4 then and h of x is equal to 2x plus 3, plus 3 find the inverse of function h okay so we know that h is equal to 2x plus 3 so the first step is to let h of x equals to y so whatever there is h of h of x we put y so y is equal to 2x plus 3 the next step the next step is basically what you do is you make x this x is subject to the formula okay so then what this thing tells us we have y minus 3 because 3 has crossed the equal sign it becomes a negative we have 2x then we divide by 2x we divide by 2x then this one and this one cancels so basically what we end up with is x is equal to a y minus 3 over 2 okay so now whenever there is x whenever there is y here in this y you substitute for x you put x so and this one you substitute by this one but we fee invert with an inverse so what it means is h of x now inverse because this function is inverted is equal to now whatever there is whatever there is y you put x so x minus 3 over 2 so this one becomes the inverse of the original function this one inverted the function so this is part a of the question then look at part b which is uh, find so this is now basically telling us that now in this function whatever there is x substitute so we are finding inverse of 5 so this tells me now that in this function whatever there is x i put a 5 minus 3 over 2 to solve this function so it basically 5 minus 3 is a 2 2 divided by 2 is a 1 so basically is equal to a 1 here okay that's part b so what that entails you is if this function was not correct then there's no you get this one correct so you have to be make sure so the first step is substitute whatever this function put a y then solve for x after you make x, x subject to a formula then replace whatever there is y with x then where there was x you replace with this function but with a power of negative one which means an inverted function then so we've got part C. So part C is asking us to find uh, H. So in the H function, whenever there is X, we substitute with F of X. That's what T, H of F of X means. So if I go there, I look for the function H. So H is basically 2X. So I'll write it 2. Whenever there is X, I will replace with F of X, which is x minus 4 then plus i continue with this part which is plus 3 then i simplify so 2 times x is 2x minus 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 plus 3 then i end up with 2x 
minus 5 as my final function. So basically, this is how you answer question number 13. So today we looked at question 11, 12, and uh, 13. Okay, so let us move to question number 14. So question number 14 is leads in the following diagram P, Q, and R are three points on the level ground. The bearing of P from Q is 228 and angle PQ, PR, angle Q, PR is equal to 72 degrees and R is due south of Q. Find the bearing of Q from P, then the bearing of P from R. So the bearing of of Q from P is basically what you are saying is when you stand at when you stand on P, okay? Q from P when you stand on P, how many degrees are we supposed to turn to look in the direction where Q is? So we are looking for this angle. Okay, we are looking for this angle. So we know that that angle is basically equal to this angle because these two lines are parallel. They are all north lines. And this line, they are parallel. Okay? These two lines are basically parallel. So, we know that from here to here is 228. Then from here to here is 180. So to find... Uh, to find basically the angle we shaded, this angle we shaded, uh, basically, we are shading blue this angle. We just need to do, uh, basically, we call it x. So x will equal basically to 228 degrees minus 180, which is this straight line, the 180, which is basically the straight line. So when once we do that, the difference basically gives us this angle here. So this angle is basically uh, 48. So 48 degrees. So 48 degrees is equal to this angle because remember the law of the parallel line. So the opposite angles are equal with two parallel lines. So if two lines are parallel, what is this angle and this angle are basically the same. Okay. So that's part A. Then you look at part B. So part B is the bearing of P from R. So when you stand at R here, how many degrees are we going to turn to face P? So it's this one we are looking for. Okay? These degrees. So we know that X is 48. So if you can be able to find this angle, then we can subtract it from the 360 to find the, the bearing for B. Okay, so I know that we know we have 72 plus X that we found which is 48 degrees. Then we have this Y, we shall call it Y plus Y is equal to 180 because it's a triangle. It's the angles in the triangle. So all angles of the triangle add up to 180. So when you add these two, I get 120 plus y is equal to 180. So y is equal to 180 minus when this one crosses, this one becomes a negative 120. So y is equal to uh, 60 degrees. So I know what y is. So for me to find the, the angles from here to here, it will just be basically 360 degrees minus 60 degrees, which will just give me 300 degrees. So 300 degrees is basically our answer on part B. So basically this is how you answer part B of question 14. So for today, we are going to end here. So we'll pick it up in our part 4 of our session from question number 15.